Okay, today we have a very serious topic to talk about, and that is why do we enjoy playing piano? I can't speak for everybody, but I'm gonna talk about myself and my experience. Why do I enjoy playing piano? You can say, why do people not enjoy play piano? Why did I not enjoy play piano when I was younger? I got piano lessons when I was four, simply because I was discovered to have perfect pitch. What does that mean? It means that somebody else played the family piano and I was a three, four year old hanging around and I could actually go up to the piano and pick out the notes, the melodies on exactly the key that was pressed without even looking at somebody playing the piano because I had the perfect pitch. I remember, it's like if you know what color red is and somebody just show you another something of fabric color, you know exactly what red is. You don't have to be told that it's red. You already know it's red. So same thing with me. When I hear a pitch, I already know which key on the piano it, it, it is correspond to. So anyway, go back to about piano. I got piano lesson from when I was four until I was 18. And then after that, I went off to college. So during that four to 18, I really did not enjoy playing piano. Piano and enjoyment were two separate words in two separate camps of my life. I did what I needed to do to fulfill the obligatory daily practice of 30 minutes and going to lessons. So anyway, why do we enjoy playing piano? Why did I not enjoy playing piano? And at this point, I want to talk to you about a different topic, which is why do people enjoy skiing? And also why do people not enjoy skiing? Like hate skiing or fearful of skiing. And I think there is a one word to describe that is really important and that is control, right? If you're skiing and you don't feel like your body isn't in control and all your focus is that hill, is the grade going down, is the fact that there are people falling over, left and right strewn all over the ski slope, then the emotion is fear. And there is nothing enjoyable about being fear, unless you want to watch a horror movie. I'm not that kind of person, but I'm just talking about skiing now. Just going down the ski slope, that is what a person who does not know how to ski would feel. If, say, and I have, I'm an intermediate skier, I am past that, and I actually do enjoy on the slope that I can handle, which is most um, most uh, basic and intermediate, and occasionally some of the lower range black trails, I do enjoy it. In fact, I'll be thinking, oh, I like to go over there. I like to do the pole planting. Yeah, what's a little patch of ice? No problem, just hang in there. Go past this patch of ice. I know over there is a really a little, little another patch of, of powder and I can bake my turn. And so, it's a planning, it's a pretty fast planning because there's, you know, because one, the terrain changes and the scenery changes. So one does have to change and plan, but I was in control. I am in control of the slope that I'm doing. And what do I focus on? I can focus on enjoy looking at the scenery. I can focus on just, you know, admiring the slope. I can even focus on admiring myself and thinking about what kind of posture that I'm doing and that, I, you know, that I think that I was going to look good. Now, I never really looked that great on in the video, really, but at least in my mind, I think I do. All right. So at this point, um, we have established that it's really important to have control. If we don't have control, there's no way we're going to have enjoyment. What kind of control it is has to do with our ability, our technical ability. Is our technical ability there? If it's completely not there, we're not going to enjoy it. Do we have to have lots of technical abilities? No, 
just like if I have mediocre, you know, low level technical ability to handle the, a beginner ski scope, I can enjoy that beginner sleep so, ski scope, slope so much without having to be put on a double black trail somewhere else, right? So control, if I am put in a place in which I can exercise control, I feel the power and I feel the power of being in control and I feel pleasure. I feel the enjoyment. Now, I have here my old friend, a three-headed dragon that I picked up from Prague many, many, many years ago. All right. And it is well known that in the olden days, people have every single town, every single village, every single little whatever affair people have gathering. They have a marionette show, right? Puppets, puppeteer has a whole bunch of these puppets. And uh, by the way, I have a few. This one isn't really a puppet. It's just another old friend of mine. So it just sits there. Just It's a really a piece of decoration and not so much of a puppet. There's no control over here. But this guy here, however, this is a classical Pinocchio. 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 So I cannot do puppeteering. But at least I can make his leg go up and down, up and down. So I cannot give you any great show on a puppet, but at least I can do this much. All right, so puppeteers are really about controlling these puppets. Of course, ah, of course, the more skill they are, the more options they have. So here is a dragon. This is a Chinese dragon I picked up from a um, Chinatown gift shop some years ago. Okay, dragon. Two kinds of dragons. So these puppets, these puppets, actually I want to make an object lesson out of these puppets and talking about room, referring that back to the idea of what makes playing piano enjoyable. I think the reason why I did not enjoy playing piano when in my earlier days is because this is what usually happened. The piano teacher will tell me, crescendo here, see, crescendo here. This phrasing is right there. Make sure that you do a wrist up at the end. Um, over there, rubato, rubato. Do you know what rubato means? Yes, don't forget, rubato, okay? Ah, you have a wrong notes here. It's supposed to be an A flat, not a G. Yeah. So anyway, did I feel like I was the puppeteer or did I feel like I was the puppet? Well, it's not hard to imagine that I felt like I was just a puppet. The teacher goes, do this, I do this. Do that, I did that. But I wasn't in control. In fact, I was taught a lot of technical things. And don't get me wrong, technical ability is really a key to control. If you don't have the technical ability, there's no way you're going to have control. There's no way you're going to have enjoyment. But when the lesson is purely focused on the technicals, we forget about how to connect the piano student to enjoyment. And that's what I'm talking about today. So, as a pianist, as an amateur pianist, now that I'm beyond those things, I already build up whatever technical abilities I have, and I'm probably not going to be the greatest pianist ever. There are so many pieces that are composed by Franz Liszt and, uh, and Rachmaninoff. I don't think so. It's just going to cost me too much time. I'm not going to play them. All right, but I'm kind of like the skier, the intermediate skier. There's so much, so many pieces of piano that I can enjoy because I have enough control to be able to extract power out of enjoyment. By the way, I'm going to talk about power in a little bit. So the problem, like I said, with a lot of piano students is that they just feel like they are the puppet. The teacher tell them to do this and do that. And there is not an intellectual 
process of thinking, look, there's a music score and how I'm going to bring this to life, right? Let's take, for example, a stage director at a Broadway show or even a high school music production, musical production. You get this score. You get the score and the director has to what? Has to think, oh, what kind of people I'm going to assemble as my actors. I can think about the stage where I want each of those actors to do what and how they are going to speak and make these words come alive. I am going to imagine the set that I'm going to put on stage. And when all this thing together, which take, I'm sure, I've never been a stage director. I can only imagine how much thinking, creative choices, planning, and thinking about from just getting this, um, just this text, all right? Just getting this thing, how I can make that into creator's production. What's the purpose? For the purpose of wowing the audience. Now you might say, wowing the audience? Wowing the audience, uh, you know that stage director is so egotistical. But let's put it this way. How about doing this in a little bit more of a noble purpose? Most people, most people, I'm not saying all people, most people have a fairly mundane life, right? You get up in the morning, brush your teeth, do your hair, set your hair, same old way, maybe a little bit different, but it's still setting the hair. They go to work or go to school. They come back to do the same thing. They vacuum the clean, vacuum clean. They, um, they, you know, cook the meal and then just kick off their feet, maybe rest for a little bit before preparing for school or do something. Sometimes they watch, uh, they have time to watch a movie, but most of the time they just do their thing, taking care of children. And then another day is over. It really is not exactly glamorous. And so people, why do people want to watch a movie? Why do people want to go to a theater? Why do people enjoy going to a concert, want to go to a concert? Because they are hoping that the stage, that this production, that this performing art is going to lift them out of that mundane life and give them something to laugh, to cry, to get mad about, to go into those characters and be teletransported out of their normal drudgery of life. So, pianist is really not any different from a stage director. When I play the piano, I, first of all, I have to learn the piece, right? I have to get learn a piece so that at least my fingers can actually move and, you know, read the score and then they have to get somewhat proficient. But once I get to that reasonable profession, proficient state, I'm starting to look at the music and I'm start to think, how can I bring this score to life? Yeah, how do I bring the score to life? And in my mind, I am like the stage director. I'm actually taking this music, the score, and I play it. And I'm thinking, now, what does the stage look like? What does that, that movie, that, that movie inside my head looks like? Where am I going? Where am I? What is the scenery? I have all those things planned out in my head. In fact, they're not even long range plans. They can be huge plans that I can do it for specific, for specific performances. I can be talk, I can sometimes before I play the piano, I will tell people what's actually going through my mind. And I'll tell them what it is I plan to play and show them through my piano. I don't always do that. Sometimes I do. I find it is actually helpful and sometimes entertaining to tell them that. Because why? Music is very abstract. There are no lyrics. Sometimes there's not even a title associated with the music. But me, the director, me, the stage director, is taking music and bring it to life so that not to wow the audience, but to give them something to make them cry, to make them laugh, 
to make them feel something to take them out of the drudgery of life. And ultimately, I also have to enjoy it, right? I also want to have that something so that my heart isn't just this complete stone, right? I also want to be moved by this music. So I enjoy myself. If I don't enjoy the music, how can I enjoy it? How can I other people enjoy my music? Can't. Absolutely not. Okay, so that's why I am. Today, I basically talk about control. You have to be a control. You have to think that to enjoy playing piano, you have to fundamentally have enough control, have enough technical ability for that piece. You don't have to have the greatest technical abilities in the whole world before you can enjoy, but you have to have enough for that piece. Then second of all, you have to think in terms of the stage director's mindset. How are you going to bring this music, this music score, after you practice reasonably, how are you going to bring it to life? What is the scenery? What is the setting? Are there any conversations? Are there characters arguing or agreeing or whatever? What is the conflict? What is even the story? There is a story. There is a story in every piece of music that I play. Okay, I might not tell you, but there is because I'm turning abstract art into a perf I'm basically making abstract art and performers, I'm sure that the composer was has some kind of idea. He wasn't just composing it just to throw some notes together. He has his own vision for the story, for that music. I have my own vision and you or the perform listener as in also has, even though I may not even tell you my story or my set, you will have something in your head. If you are really actively participating in music, you will also see a scenery in your head. And so together we make music because that is fun. So control, power, the power to transform our life out of drudgery. And that leads to pleasure. So that is what I have to say today. I know I got a little bit long-winded. And I might do a video to try to convince children to basically about that, how to think differently about playing music, about playing piano. Because playing piano for most people is very lonesome experience. You're here in a room by yourself. It's not like most pianists even get to go to an orchestra and go buddy buddy with those first chair this and last chair that and you know just like people in a, in a thing and go traveling oh wow we're gonna go perform something that's all carpool and have a good time in the carpool there isn't any of that a pianist in most cases it's quite a lonesome personal experience however the piano is one of the most amazing instrument you're using 10 fingers to control 88 keys, plus two pedals, maybe three pedals, but nobody ever used the middle pedal. 88 keys, two pedals, 10 finger. And how are you gonna move that to create the drama? Okay, 